What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Hops Geek News, a podcast that talks about comic books, movies, TV shows, and we feature a beer of the week typically. However, this week it's coffee time because we are recording in the morning time. And uh, although it's never a bad time for a beer, we got to be responsible once in a while, right? Today's episode is a Flash movie review, and it will be spoiler filled. So if you haven't seen The Flash, then maybe go see it or don't come back and listen or listen anyways. Totally up to you. That said, where you can find us, Hops Geek News, on every social media platform, every single podcasting platform. Go ahead. Don't forget to rate, review, subscribe to the show to help us grow. And then, of course, if you feel so inclined to help and want to subscribe even further, go ahead. Patreon.com slash Hops Geek News. We got all sorts of fun things going on. Come hang out with us on Discord as well. I always drop the link in the episode bios. Let's talk flash of course real quick i'm drinking starbucks coffee that's what's in here a big old cup of iced coffee this morning and uh lauren what is your coffee sponsored by it's also starbucks um (laughs) so i had you know we got that capes and heroes coffee which is pretty good and it's fun and they send you uh comic books with it and i thought oh we'll we'll do this anytime we record in the morning but then i get up and my husband's already made a full pot of coffee and the house smells so good so then i end up just pouring that i blew through that coffee it was good I Did like you? I only had yeah. one cup to try it. And then like Josh just always makes the coffee and he prefers Starbucks. So I need to tell him next time, don't make me coffee. But that hey, we're recording, so dumbass. No, I'm just yeah. <laughs> but you yeah, no, make he's the special stuff. He's very specific about his coffee. That's but I do fair. have it in a Captain Marvel mug because we'll also be recording Secret Invasion. And I don't have a Secret Invasion mug. I don't either. But yeah, that's uh, that's another episode that we have out. So go ahead and uh, ch- check on that one. Let's talk Flash. So the official synopsis of The Flash, the movie that was in production since like 2015, went through about 17 million different directors, finally found it. their director and Andy Muschietti, who is also going to be directing The Brave and the Bold coming out, apparently. Anyways, Barry Allen uses his super speed to change the past, but his attempt to save his family creates a world without superheroes, forcing him to race for his life in order to save the future. Now, of course... The cast is star-studded. We got Sasha Kelly, We got Ben Affleck. Ezra Miller. We got Michael Keaton. Michael Shannon returns. Ron Livingston's back. And, uh, yeah, lots of people. Jeremy Irons and uh, even Tamura Morrison makes a little appearance as well. There were a lot of yeah, cameos. People in the audience, when he like picked up the phone, they went, oh! and I feel like they forgot that he's aquaman's dad because like that wasn't a shock it was literally said who he was calling that he was calling he goes that's aquaman's dad like he said that and then people went and i really think it's just people that were like oh shit that's boba fett he's like you want to talk to my dog (laughs) i know uh but yes so the movie starts out with barry trying to get a sandwich and he was kind of so my first impressions so we'll get to the ezra stuff here in a little bit like obviously there's a big black cloud hanging over this film we understand, and uh, I will talk about that here shortly. But the movie starts off with Barry Allen trying to get food. I didn't like Barry Allen at first. Like, he was... Well, he was hangry. Off. Yeah, there's just something off about the portrayal of Barry Allen at the beginning of this movie. Because we're used to him being so wholesome and sweet, and I think that's one of the things that Ezra's kind of took away from all of us in this movie, because there were times where I was like... Barry Allen and Grant Gustin both just genuinely seem like nice guys who truly care. And you know that Ezra does not. And I felt like that did take it away a little. But I Ezra did a fantastic job in the movie. I will say that horrible human being. I hope they never cast him again in anything. I hope he gets recast. Um, But I thought they portrayed the hangry very well because, you know, we I personally learned so much about Barry from the TV show. And I know that he has to intake a shit ton of calories. So I thought that was kind of cool that they showed, you know, Barry with the watch and he was just getting hangry and he's, you know, getting yelled at every which way he can, because he's constantly late, like Spider-Man. So I, I understood it. I didn't hate him for it. I understood it. Yeah. Um, that's the big, I like how they did play into that a lot was like, Hey, you need to eat a lot of calories to be able to move and do the things that you do. And I, uh, not for nothing, but I actually really enjoyed the suit. I liked the flash suit in this movie too. It was very cool. Uh, I liked the colors and the things that they did with it. It was very new 52 ish. Even though it was way... painful on his dick. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So at that point, that's when Alfred calls in is like, we need you because the rest of the justice league is busy. And it leads to this very awful sequence. I'm going to say, well, uh, there was oh, with all the babies. 
Yeah, so well, I'll get At to first, ben I was like, there's no way they're going to start the movie by killing a bunch of babies. Well, obviously not, but the CGI is all over the place in this movie. I'm going to be honest. That, that That is my glaring complaint, is that for a $200 million movie, the CGI looks like it's about PS3, PS4 graphics. It's not very... Like, the babies... This sequence, oh, the I babies look terrible. For. I get what they're right. going for. He was saving like a ton of people at once. They could have not used babies and just used like ER nurses or something like that, and that would have been fine because these this dude he broke out of prison. He stole this uh bio weapon essentially, and so Bruce Wayne, Ben Affleck, he's chasing them around the city in this really cool bat bike because the bat bike makes a return. You know, if you think about the bat bike Bale. scenes were cool, and I was even yeah. thinking when he's like sliding down like the bridge or whatever, like that scene looked really cool. And then, oh, but yeah. yeah, it did kept cutting back to almost like claymation CGI. Yes, so that's what I'm saying. Like it bounces back and forth. I really enjoyed the Batman sequences. I I love Ben Affleck. I wish we could have gotten more of this or more of him <laughs> because it's it's really cool. Like. He's going through the city. He showcases some of his, you know, abilities and weapons and gear. That sequence, the whole chase is really cool. Uh, Those dumbass kids getting off the bus who just stood in the middle of the street as there was like an oncoming collision coming towards them and didn't move. That was kind of funny. Well, no, he had already diverted it. I know, but still the kids were just sitting there like, well, I'm like, you idiots. (laughs) But no, I would would honestly say what we've seen him in uh, Suicide Squad. Batman versus Superman and then Justice League and this. And I would say, yeah, this was my favorite portrayal of Batflick. But what's yes. funny is um, my husband has not seen all of the DC movies. He's not really into DC at all. And so I asked somebody, is it worth bringing him? Is he going to enjoy it? I asked Sean from Metal Corners because he had already seen it. He's like, yeah, he'll, he'll still enjoy it, but he'll enjoy it more, obviously, if he's seen everything. So he knew that they were connected to other things. And when um, Ben Affleck got in the car and drove away, they go, who gave the blind guy a car? And I'm like, what? And it took me a second. I'm like, oh, are you making a daredevil joke? And he goes, he's not daredevil. And I was like, no. <laughs> wow, that's a deep cut right there. Oh my and then god. He's, and then he's like, oh, daredevil's Marvel. And I'm like, yeah, you've seen the show. And I'm like, and you saw uh, Spider-Man No Way Home. He's like, I forget these things. And he just... <laughs> <laughs> he left at one point. I feel like he got like bored and he came back with a beer and nachos. I was like, oh, thanks. And got me another beer. Well, I mean, hey, you know what? That's our spouses don't love this stuff. Um, you know, my wife's a little more into it than Josh, of course, but she's yes. also she's like your your wife goes to Comic Cons and hangs out true. and yeah. That's, yeah. So it's it, that that's hilarious. That is that's good. Um yeah, the the baby CGI man. I can't get past the baby. Like my, my wife, she hate Carrie hated it. She, hate, she hated it was pretty rough. She hated the whole sequence of the babies that almost ruined the movie for her. And I was like, we could have done so many other things. But yeah, that was. And then I think like the fact that he was like, eating snacks in the middle of it, that was fine. But then, yeah, just everything. He needed the, the snacks. I know, but everything with the babies. It's like put on the the mask before on yourself before you save the kids. But no, yeah, the babies didn't look great. And then I'm like, I, you know, now I'm just like, he's going to Gwen Stacy these babies when he grabs them. Like, I know. I was like, just... how is he going to do this? And then, I mean, it was kind of clever, but he puts one baby in a microwave. Like, I know. When he did that, I literally like aloud was like, no. I was like, what? This I just whispered to unhinged. myself. <laughs> Do not ever put a baby in a microwave. That was oh terrible. It was it was insane. But then but... he did explain that a little bit later. He's like, I can't. Yes, put... see, I caught that. Yeah. When the other flash then like moved him and he puked, he's like, you, you can't really move people like that. He's like, you can stick them in a microwave. But the other and move the microwave. That lady didn't puke, I guess, which is. interesting. Well, I guess how he caught them in the end, like he can't move quick with them, I guess. That's why he like did things and pushed things or pushed other things to block things to not that kill the sense. babies. That's fair. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. You're right. You're right. Um, but... I This also leads to like the year of Gal Gadot doing 30 second cameos uh, and two of them are Wonder Woman. Like she showed up in Shazam and she was not filming in the same time as the rest of the movie. And then in this one, I the one trope I'm really tired of is the goofy lasso of truth making dudes like stumble and bumble over i loved the batman part not the. i liked batman like so the batman was like hi and i was like this is kind of funny then he had the lasso of truth i was like okay that's fine i actually think that's funny and uh because there's different iterations of comics where wonder woman and batman have it yeah together and i'm cool with that like i actually feel it in this movie but then like barry had to open his mouth he's like i've never had sex and i was like oh boy why do they keep making all these superheroes virgins like no i don't know why the least they're yeah know. the least believable thing in smallville was that tom welling was a virgin like, yeah, like really guys come on 
I mean, I could believe it with this iteration of Barry Allen 100%. But... No, you're getting laid by somebody, especially because he's not, he's older than 18. He's not even 18. Not, yeah, I, I'm I, guessing 18 year old Barry is not a virgin. Yeah. But, anyways, but, yeah, she just shows up. But and I did like that. And disappears. I was <laughs> like, this is Fast and Furious, Shazam, and now this. She just appears for 30 seconds of screen time and probably gets paid a pretty good Monday amount of money. I love her. She I showed think- up and I was like, oh, fuck, I forgot to see Shazam too. I still haven't seen it. Anytime she's on screen, you get that boo doo 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 bomb bomb bomb. It's like <laughs> Dude, the music was awesome the whole thing. I think just because every time I heard Batman eighty nine music, it was like Yeah. Just yeah. so nostalgic and fun. And I was like, Yes. And that's why I was all about this movie was Michael Keaton. That is why oh, I was all about yeah, this. Yeah, for sure. After this, uh there was, you know, Barry there was a really like good sequence and I didn't realize it at first, but then when they say her name later on is uh Patty Spivet is one of yeah, the Patty. Friends, Patty and Albert. And I was like, oh, OK, that's cool. I, I don't know how to pronounce this actress's name. So Royce Monica Jackson plays Patty Spivet, which she's barely I mean, she's barely in it, which is cool. But she's in a, a bunch of just like TV shows and things like that. I didn't recognize her from anything else. But I, I liked that little Easter egg that they threw her into that. Yeah, she was in quite a few episodes. Her that character of the Flash, I remember yeah. Barry dated her. Well, yeah, he's she's a love interest in like the new Fifty Two run and some other things ah. like that, other than Iris. So that was a cool little Easter egg. And uh, I also really liked the moment between uh, Batfleck and Ezra, I, or Barry, I guess you say. I thought those moments, anytime like there was some like one on one moments of Barry with Bruce, was cool. So. The the where he they're talking about the time travel and Bruce is basically like explaining it. You can't do this for this mm-hmm. reason. You're always going to change something. Even the tiniest changes affect something major, so to speak. And it was a really cool scene. And I actually, I wish we got more of that Bruce Wayne man. I wish we had a solo Ben Affleck Batman movie because I it is I crazy that we don't love him. He's is that like so the only good. Batman who didn't get his own movie? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and. It just sucks that the Justice League movie that was made by that piece of trash, Joss Whedon, pretty much ruined. And then all the fans that just suck. Well, Batman versus Superman was still not good. And that was one of the things I was thinking when he first went back in time. I'm like, well, at least they fixed that. (laughs) Shut up. (laughs) (laughs) But Uh, I do. I wonder if we had gotten more Batflick if that hadn't been his debut as him. I don't know. Without a doubt. But uh, I also loved when they find Michael Keaton because you know it's him. You know it's coming. Obviously. And then he's like dressed like the dude. Feral. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I loved that scene. Just watching him too. like kick ass dressed as like with, you know, his flippy floppies on. Before I wish he had been there, drinking a white Russian. That would have been perfect. Been good. Uh, my big complaint. So again, another big complaint was the CGI. And this is when Barry starts to go back in time for the first time. It was cool at first. And then he gets to that like room almost and it's when he's running it it doesn't make sense to me because his arms are moving forward but his legs are moving backward i'm like what kind I didn't of even animation notice that. yeah when he's his arms are moving forward his legs are going backwards i'm like i don't understand the animation here and then you get really freaking awful cgi it's literally video game graphics and a lot of it doesn't make sense because a lot of these scenes we just filmed like later in the movie during the big fight we were just filming scenes with Zod and Supergirl. Like, why did you have to computer generate them? Why did you computer generate everybody? You could have spliced scenes. Like, I'm not a visual effects master, but I, I, I don't know shit. But, like, I just think that that was for Maybe they were going for something artistically to, well, like. He came out, Andy did, and was like, it's on purpose because this is visualized. But I'm like, no, that's just you make an excuse for really shitty CGI. But whatever. Yeah. Do you no, the CGI did take away from it a, a few moments, but for the most part, yeah, the most part they did a good job. But like the actual fight scenes were all really good, were yeah. really well done. But yeah, yeah, the babies and the and the speed force well, were not did the best. A really good job explaining things like how his suit was made and like the, mm-hmm. the science behind it. And I thought they did a really good job of explaining how he phases through things because mm-hmm. that's one of my favorite powers of flashes is he can when they show it. Stuff. Yeah, the molecules. Like, that was cool. They really did. Like that was really well done. I liked that, and uh, I didn't really care for the ADHD crazy spaz version of Barry at first. But it kind of makes sense again. Like he grew up with his parents. He was spoiled, and he's just like a stoner kid. So yeah, he's an eighteen-year-old cool. kid in his first year of college. He's like, like is this an, a leftover acid trip or something like that? Oh yeah, I could have lived without seeing uh, Ezra's 
naked booty out there in the middle of the street, honestly. Like, <laughs> but again, I mean, like, I, I like, like the, that scene though, just because it made sense that his clothes would burn off. And yes, I even thought that. That's what I'm I was like, going to say, yeah. He was trying so, to like explain to him. He's like, wait. And then he goes and runs. And it's like, if, I'm glad they explained why he can't run in just everyday clothes because it burns it off. Yeah. Cause I feel like in the TV show and a lot of these other versions, they just skip all that. And they're like, yes. you're just supposed to, you know, oh, that's just movie magic or whatever. Or like, you know, if you listen to the Talkville podcast, they always make the comment like, oh, Clark's clothes are just fine. Like, you yes. know, and, and so they did a good job with that. I definitely agree. And even when he redid the bat suit to look like the flash suit and then original Barry was like, oh, you have to be careful because you're going to build up too much energy in there and whatnot. So, yeah. cause that's one of the things with Barry is it's like Peter, he's, he's intelligent and that's mm -hmm. always, you know, fun in the flash when you hear them, you know, do this bullshit science basically where there's still a little bit of truth behind all of it when yeah. you hear Cisco and Barry and Caitlin, like figure all these things out. So that was cool to see. Yeah. I, and then, uh, I do like, that uh, they did when like how they went and decided everything made sense. So he was like, oh, we got to go find Bruce Wayne because I have no many humans in that whole sequence. So he's like, Albert, can you stop? And he's like playing the music in the background. And he's like, this is my cousin, Barry. And then yeah, I know how I like the little joke of Marty McFly. The Oh, my God. Eric Stoltz. Yes. Like, I don't. That was that... a funny joke. So I was actually listening to an interview recently with the guy who plays Biff and I didn't realize they almost shot the entire movie. I thought that yeah. they had just done a few key scenes. I didn't realize like the, and I guess the Eric Stoltz guy was also like, um, what did Joker do? Uh, uh, method acting. He was oh, like, you yeah, know, yeah. call me Marty, but he wasn't doing it with Leah Thompson because he was, you know, she's cute. So he didn't oh, want to do that with her. <laughs> But that was so funny. I'm like, the worst thing to come from him going in the past was they he fucked was like, up Back to the Future. I know. He was like, um, and then he was naming off like the movies or whatever that never exists. He's like, oh my God, I broke and everything. Then, and, yeah. <laughs> and then what was it with Footloose? They said somebody else was in oh, Footloose. Was, somebody uh, else was in Top Gun. It, Kevin like, Bacon. Oh, he was like, wasn't he the- Michael J. That, Fox. Yeah. Michael J. Fox is in Footloose. And then he was like, no, no that's Kevin, Kevin Bacon. Bacon. He was no, like, he was you in mean Top the guy Gun. in Top Gun about the gay pilots? <laughs> and then I was like, because <laughs> it's, I just- that, Military services always make fun of each other and everybody like the Navy, that's like their shtick, whether it's politically correct or not. And so that was kind of just funny, like military humor, I guess. But yeah, it was like, no, he's in Top Gun. And I was like, this is he's like, I broke the universe. <laughs> that, that that was amazing. My first thought that I like that a lot, too. Uh, and then I always love how Wayne Manor is always covered in fog. And just looks so dreary. <laughs> like no matter what iteration, like you're. Like, yeah, Wade Manor is just like the most depressing place on earth. The whole area is nice and shiny, and they actually did a really good job of Gotham City and Central City. Like I liked the city scenery that they had. It didn't look right. dirty and depressing. It mm -hmm. actually looked pretty nice. It looked like a city. Well, then uh, Bruce even said like, you know, Gotham City crime is cleaned up. They don't even like. He's like sad they don't need him anymore. Oh, he that fixed reminds it. me. Yes, when the lasso of truth, he's like. You know, I could have, I have all this money. I could have donated it to make a better thing. I was like, I like that they leaned into that joke a little bit on that they, aspect. Did you catch the one? Um, oh, was it? I think it was when they rescued Supergirl and uh, which they didn't even call her Supergirl, which I like that because he's well, like, no, what does he, the S stand for? Did he yeah, call her Supergirl? Yeah. The other Barry uh, from this alternate. Well, he made the was, joke. He said Supergirl and he, she, and uh, she just stares at what him. This stands for he was Supergirl and that's what yeah. says, hope. And he was like, yeah, hope, hope. Because they weren't actually like referring to her as Supergirl. And I actually kind of like that. Agreed. Um, but uh, when they rescued her and um, the one Barry who's has this, the fast powers right there and, and the other Barry doesn't. And they did like the scene. And in my head, I was thinking, wow, they're doing a good job not overdoing the slow motion. They're doing really well. And then new Barry goes, man, you should have seen that in slow motion. And I like died laughing. And Josh is like looking at me like, I don't understand what's so funny. <laughs> and I was I thought that I had to like be quiet laughing because then it was like a quiet scene. I thought oh. that was hilarious. Like kudos to you guys. You even called out the over usage of yes. slow-mo. I thought it was a uh, pretty funny. So everyone makes fun of the, the running sequences of how Barry runs and he, they explained it's like, he's like swimming through the air and stuff. So that kind of made sense, but it was funny when our Barry lost his powers and he tries to run and he's like, very awkwardly <laughs> looks awful. I was like, okay, I really like that. Cause it's like, they're making fun of that as well. I thought yeah. that was pretty, that was pretty good. Well, uh, I've heard it with the TV show. They're like, yeah, you should see Grant run. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, it's just going to look awkward, that. of course. So, I mean, 
That's that's the hard part. And I, some of the sequences of the running looked pretty good. They weren't, you know, Makari Eternals level of like really good CGI right. as far as the running. But I thought overall they did a pretty decent job for the most part on that aspect. Uh, but yeah, Makari and Barry, I feel like are very differently portrayed in the comic books too, how oh, they yeah. run. So for sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, yeah. That's good comparison. And when we get to Michael Keaton, of course, in the, in the, the back, Wayne Manor. not the back of Wayne Manor. Yeah. I, I was really cool how he explained the multiverse. Like I loved that. I know people are like, oh, I'm all of a sudden, I, there's a bunch of discourse. Like, I'm tired of multiverse stories, blah, blah, blah. It's like, then don't watch these movies because comic book movies have progressed to the point where this multiverses are a big deal in comic books. So, like, just mm -hmm. don't watch them. You know, whatever. I'm well, not tired DC of them. DC did it first on the screens. They did it I before mean, Marvel DC's did it. DC's big thing is the multiverse, but whatever. That's neither here nor there. I will say like this because he's like, this is a fulcrum. There's like fixed points in time that have to happen no matter what you do. And then you get the spaghetti. There's like parallel things happening and some intersecting points and this and that. And I was like, okay, they dumbed it down enough for like the average audience member who might not understand what the multiverse is to like, they dumbed it down pretty much and explained it mm -hmm. like they're five. And I thought that was pretty clever. Well, and here was a nod. I'm assuming that was to Back to the Future because he's like, I'm sure you've seen a movie. And at first I was like, it's yes. making fun of Marvel. or But then I, I think it was a Back it to the Future It was a Back reference. to the Future that says, you know, if you change this, it affects this. But no, like when you go back and it changes your future and your past. And I was Which like, we saw yeah, more awesome. of in the future. What did you do when? Oh, actually, OK, before we get to that, what was your reaction when you saw Nick Cage? Oh, yeah, yeah. OK, so uh, that was awesome because... If you don't know, Kevin Smith in 96 was supposed to make a Superman movie and Nicolas Cage was going to play Superman. And so, you know, Kevin Smith is losing his mind and loving it. And I actually, I was cool with it. I liked the cameos were cool and they made sense. I just, again, when we get to I wanted point, more I, though. I was like, I, I wanted Grant. There I wanted some people Grant missing. Gustin. I don't know why Grant wasn't there. I don't know why like maybe Christian Bale wasn't there. Why didn't Val Kilmer somehow his, if you're a computer generating everybody, why wasn't Val Kilmer's Batman? What about him? Tom Welling? I mean, you could go on and on. You yeah, Doom oh, Patrol, you could have kept going We got forever. George Reeves. But, we got Christopher Reeves. We had Adam West and then, you know, Nick I love that Adam West. So that but was they, fine did all that in on the CW. So I will say that they did that not long ago. And we even saw this flash Ezra's flash in, um, which is also why like why CW. was Grant showing up? You know? I know I, I wanted to see, I was hoping that that scene was going to be from that movie and that they were going to show that scene again. I thought that would have been really cool to see how truly connected they are. Should but have. yeah, I don't know why they didn't do I just, that. I, I love Grant Gustin so much. Right I need too. to finish the fucking flash. Yeah. <sighs> one day i liked the uh the slow motion scene of feral bruce wayne trying to fight the flash and like our barry's getting his ass kicked and meanwhile the other barry is just like slow motion and then michael keaton's getting beat up that was fun to watch and it was cool to see michael keaton like he felt like batman as soon as he came mm -hmm. like to it the presence was great like i thought it was really clever how they go to the bat cave and barry's like i see you bruce i know you're watching and he is and I was like, I love that because, you know, he 100 percent would be. It's Bruce Wayne. Of course, he's going to yeah. be watching. And Barry knows Bruce, even if it's not his Bruce. There's similarities yeah. with all of them. Well, they explain it later. It's like there's different Bruce's all throughout the multiverse, but they all kind of act the same. And he did make a comment when he was doing the spaghetti, too, where it's like some of them intersect, which is and he explained why some of them are the same actor, basically. And so I feel like he was explaining it for Marvel and for DC, honestly. He I really thought was. that was like, that was really, yeah. really well done explanation. Mm -hmm. And I liked I did like when he came back, because when they go to Russia to find Clark, uh, this I love that the, the action sequences with Batman were freaking good. He was beating some serious ass and you mm -hmm. felt the hits and the way he moved. I loved every second of that. Yeah. Oh, my God. And when Zod said the infant didn't make it. Oh. <gasps> Oh yeah, 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 dude. That was that well, was they, hard. It was crazy because they come to find out, and Batman was ready to go. He's like, "It's not him." And then they still saved her. And then she kind of—I thought the CGI was pretty decent when she was there in Siberia and she was beating up all the bad guys. I was like, "Oh yeah, yeah. these guys are all dead." No, they did a good job with her. And I—we are going to see more of her. Or no, I don't even know what's uh, happening. So in the, the original ending hope so. of the film was shot where Keaton and Sasha show up actually, and. Barry's universe that we're in now like he leaves the courthouse and like they actually shot the scene there was pictures and everything of those two Supergirl and Batman showing up but they scrapped that and that's what the ending that we got instead mm -hmm. so 
I don't think we'll ever see Michael Keaton again. Well, I I'm glad we don't got to see him, know, especially after Alex Batgirl Smith. got scratched. Yeah. Uh, but I, I liked that Zod came back, and I, everybody was complaining like he, oh, he's just this run of the mill villain. I'm like, well, that's the point. Like he, that, yeah, he. This movie isn't about him. Like Man of Steel no. was about Zod and Clark. In this iteration, Zod's just a bad guy coming to Earth, and the whole point was, oh God, I gotta save this Earth, and so they went and got Sasha, Supergirl, and. I, one thing I really liked too was how they showed Barry the flashpoint nods. So like in flashpoint paradox, Barry tries to electrocute himself to get his powers back and he gets fried to shit. And they showed that in this movie too. I'd like that callback. Cause this is a flashpoint paradox movie essentially. Mm-hmm. And I like that they showed him getting his powers both. I like the, the key. It, it was just like, all right, I'll electrocute. Yeah, you. And they're like, do it again. And I'll do like, it again. Right, zap. And he's like, Oh, it's, oh, it's fried. <laughs> But then Supergirl carries him, gets him electrocuted up there, and then he gets his powers back, luckily. And when the pictures originally came out, they were like, is that a bat? Like, what is going on with his suit? Like, that looks so bad. This is what we're getting. And it made sense that you Uh, didn't know. People were complaining before the movie came out, of course. But it made sense that the alternate Barry put together a bat suit because Batman was like, threw it to Barry Allen when he was going to get electrocuted to get his powers back. And was Mm -hmm. like, this is going to help. And he's like, no, I need it to right at me. And right. The other Barry turned that into a bat suit. It made sense that it looked all wonky. Yeah. It was a fucking Batman suit. Yeah, so. we got to stop complaining before because a lot of people did that with Little Mermaid. Yeah, but Flounder and Scuttle and Sebastian, they totally change them. But when you see the movie, it makes it makes sense. It's fine. Yeah, I had like, no issue with those three characters while adaptations. watching the movie. Adaptations. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like if it's like the difference between hearing a clip from something and hearing the whole explanation. Like, yeah. you know. I mean, some movies do suck. Don't get me wrong. And, you know, the, I would say the only you also you knew how this movie was going to end, though. You 100 percent knew like he had to go back and oh, let yeah. his mom that was another complaint. I've seen people like you. You knew how this whole plot was going to play out. I'm like, yeah, of course, you knew how was going to end. If you right. know the Flashpoint Paradox story, you know how this ends. Uh-huh. That's the tragedy of Barry Allen. Like he it's like Uncle Ben is able to gotta go die. Back Nora Allen's got to die. Yeah. And. They had the the black flash chasing after him. That was cool. And then all the the whole sequence of fighting out in the desert. I liked that. Like there were some really cool aspects of that fight, how they were electrocuting the Kryptonians to death. Like they showed that the flash, you know, can stand toe to toe with Kryptonians. Like they're just as fast, if not a little bit faster. And no, he said that they were faster. Yeah. Well, yeah. Barry's faster than the cause he because the new Barry is like, oh, they're fast. And I instantly thought of that scene where Superman like yes. looks over. Which was actually on. We went to Ellipsis before we went there, and they actually had Justice League on the TV. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, too, like, Sasha, she was beating some serious ass. Like, she was messing Zod up. I thought, like, she was showing some brutality, which is really cool. And, again, Zod was just kind of there. And there were some some points between the two berries when they were on screen together that the CGI also looked really bad. And the, I thought they like, did a pretty good job, though, because it was the most interesting. Part. Yeah. Watching him hold himself, knowing he's not a twin. Yeah. So, I mean, and there are times like one's a little bit taller than the other, but I'm like, yeah, it could be their shoes. And I thought, you know, once, you know, uh, Supergirl dies, Batman dies, they go back in time, they fix it. And again, Batman dies again. And you get this really good, like, hey, I can save you. He goes, not this time. That was really cool. And it was like kind of emotional where Michael Keaton basically said, that's it. I'm done. You know, he showed up, he did his part, and that was sad. And then again, I, Supergirl I dies. Think he wanted, I think he wanted to go out fighting. Well, he did. And didn't. he hadn't gotten a chance to fight in a while. Yeah. Yeah. So that was well, sweet. I like that. And then they go to try to, they're back in the Speed Force, and the alternate Barry's like, I can do this a million times. And that's when our Barry realizes, like, fixed point in times, my mom has to die. Again, the tragedy right. of Barry Allen is his mom always has to die. Like, and you knew that was coming too. Like you knew yeah. that that was going to be the going to be Barry. And I thought it was cool how they showed the other worlds colliding into each other. That was, I liked that. Uh, I don't like this awful graphics. <laughs> I just, again, like the awful graphics and the cameos and all that, but setting that aside, it was cool that Barry was like, yeah, I, this has to happen. And the other Barry was refusing to accept it. And it turns out the other Barry was the black flash because he had been doing this for so long. And, People complained again, like, oh, he's the villain. It's like, well, it makes sense. Like, our Barry has 
gone through everything. This other Barry just got the powers. He doesn't know how to be a hero. He doesn't know any of this stuff yet. So it makes right. sense that he thinks he can save everybody with his newfound powers. That's just mm -hmm. how it goes. He never had the the slow buildup of gaining the confidence and right. the intelligence and all that. He's just overly cocky. Well, and you know, they never said who killed uh, Nora Allen. I will say like, I do wish that we had gotten a reverse flash hint. That's mm -hmm. my, but again, I don't think they knew if we were getting a sequel or anything like that. They, they probably didn't want to tease anything without knowing the future. Well, like bringing Superman in and the end of a movie and then doing right. nothing with him. My, my thought is if James Gunn is so high on this movie that there's going to be a sequel. I sincerely hope Ezra is recast though. Like I, I would be surprised if, if I thought Ezra did don't. a great job. Like Ezra. Okay. Acting yeah. wise, acting wise, Ezra did a decent job. Like he, they really, they're the, the scene in the grocery store at the end where he was hugging his mom and stuff. That was yeah. a very emotionally well done scene. I just don't think, you know, Ezra's a piece of trash human being. Don't just recast him and move on. I'm cool I with that. Yes, I was really hoping that the end credit scene would be something along those lines of him getting re recast, like another flash shows up. Agreed. I thought that that would have been really cool. Um, but instead, we got Do the right as, thing. That was a weird end credit scene. What the oh, fuck? Oh, yeah, I'll get to that in a minute. Yeah, agreed. Uh, so I mean, I love Aquaman. Well, I don't love <laughs> Aquaman. I love... <laughs> All right, Just go ahead. Yeah, well, that, that leads to, you know, the courthouse where his dad's appeal is going on. Barry figured out his dad didn't look at the camera because he went out to get that extra can of tomatoes for the sauce. And he never looked up at the camera to prove that he was actually there and he didn't kill him again. I do wish we gotten some reverse flash nods, but if they make a sequel, obviously I think that's where we're headed. Mm -hmm. And so he fixes that. He looks at the camera, he gets out, they go out to the courthouse scene. And now this is where Keaton and Sasha were supposed to show up. However, the car pulls up, he's talking to Bruce Wayne and I recognize George Clooney's voice. I, I didn't. Like, oh, I knew it wasn't shoot, that's Ben George Affleck, Clooney. though. I'm like, I was thinking, I'm like, is it Michael Keaton? I knew it wasn't Affleck. I didn't think I, that it would actually be Michael Keaton get it, or Michael Keaton. I didn't think it would be George Clooney getting out of the car. I legit was like, when he got out of the car, I was like, no way. And then I, the most- Can we this bring back oh. Alicia Silverstone? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, give me Chris O'Donnell even. I don't care. Yeah. But <laughs> I I'm thought for it was, it. like the, the best use, like between guardians and this, like they did a really well job using their one F bomb because Barry was like, who the fuck is that? Like it was, <laughs> it felt natural. I didn't uh, even pick was, up on that. It was great. Yeah. He gets out of the car and Barry's like, who the fuck is that? And I was like, that's good. <laughs> okay. That is good. And he used a lot of shits. Yes. Shit was thrown around quite a lot. My only complaint though, is I wish they didn't use George Clooney for the sole fact of, okay, how are you going to explain Batman now? Like, is he Batman in this universe? He's staying in this universe. How are we going to explain Batman in this universe now? It's not George Clooney. No. I don't. So that's my only complaint. It's like, I wish they kind of set up the other Batman. You didn't have to show him us his face. That would have been great. And Maybe this, uh, I don't know. Yeah. But I also didn't really like Iris and Barry's relationship yet. She was barely on screen, but she was kind of a really big dick. To I did Barry. not like this Iris at all. She was just kind of an a hole. Like there was something off. Like they had no chemistry. Yeah. I think is what no, it was. There was none zero chemistry between these two actors. Uh, I'm not saying like Kiersey Clemens. She can probably act her ass off. She just has no chemistry with Ezra. Like who? I've never seen her in in anything else. But yeah. like I did not. She even came back to apologize and say. But I guess I'm I'm used to Iris from the show, and I love her. She seems so sweet yeah. and genuine and intelligent. And I mean, this person just. Uh, yeah, there was no, there was no I layers. Didn't feel any chemistry or anything. And again, no. she was barely in the movie, but yeah, yeah. The scene in the last movie they had was better. She was better in that than Agreed. she was in this. Was it even the same actress? I haven't seen it, it was. in a while. Yeah, it okay. Was. Um, but yeah, and she mentioned that too. She's like, "Didn't I see you recently?" Yeah, and oh, Barry's yeah, like, right. "No, no, no, you did not." Um, but that scene was better than any of their scenes together in yeah. this movie. Agreed. And yeah, that that end credit scene, I think. The reason why they did the end credit scene of just Aquaman and Barry stumbling out of a bar together where he's like, yeah, there's different Batmans, but they all are basically the same person or played by different. There's different people that are Bruce Wayne's that. But he's like, you're always Aquaman. I think that was basically saying like, right. So he's going to remain Aquaman in the new DC, I think, is uh... what that basically was saying. But also hmm. this ends the Snyder crap and they don't have any firm like. 
they don't know what's going on. So they couldn't set another movie up because they're right, right now, like James Gunn just said that blue beetle is going to kick off the new DC universe. And so gotcha. and Aquaman, what... when does Aquaman two come out? December. Oh, and wow. so that, I think that's what that was like because Aquaman two is coming out this year. They're, they're t- hyping that up, but yeah, it was just a kind of like, okay, again, meh end credit scene. So overall though, I, uh, I only give this movie like a seven out of 10 because the CGI, like ah. I, I, I liked the emotional moments. I liked the humor. I liked the action. I I liked the story a lot, but the CGI for me, like it's a $200 million movie and the CGI was just that bad. Like I can't give it anything higher than a seven. And so in my opinion, that's, that's what I give it. I think I'm going to give it a 7.5. Whoa. We, um, you, you rated a DC movie higher than I did. Yeah, I th- I ha- I really enjoyed this, and honestly, if I wish it ha- it wasn't this you know terrible human being, and I do think that Ezra should be canceled at this point, a hundred percent. Um, yeah. but you know, and I understand why they didn't because so much had already been done, and you had all these other well, actors and thing, people like involved the, in the project. The movie was the movie was made by the time that they went on this really crazy hike. The, you know whatever the hell they were doing like yeah they in 2020 he did commit like assault he like choked a woman or something which is fucking terrible you know that alone that. exactly uh, that alone should have like bro no but they moved forward and then the movie was pretty much made but you, you can see in the marketing that they've heavily marketed it off of batman and supergirl for that reason i think mm-hmm. well and i think keaton sells for sure well, th- that too. Like, Batman so I think that sells. was a yeah win win there. Yeah, Batman yeah. sells, but Batman Michael Keaton's sells, Batman yeah. is uh, yes. what, as you would say, chef's kiss. Yeah. Uh, but no, this was I honestly I this is probably the most enjoyable DC movie I have experienced. Um, other than maybe if you want to say like when I was a kid watching the movies, but like well, I really enjoyed it. I loved the nods to things. I loved the call outs. I loved that they had Supergirl next to Superman. And I even went all and my husband again looks at me and I explained to him after and I'm like, well, she's, you know, played Supergirl. And then yeah. she's actually Kal-El's mom in Smallville and she's Supergirl's mom in the CW. So I like that they, you know, because I've everybody loves Christopher Reeve, but yeah. it was nice to see her whose name I can't even remember. But, you know. It was, it was nice. No, it, it definitely was nice. And there was, I, I think it's DC's best movie that they've come out with personally. And, but yeah, just the CGI for me just really bothered me. It's petty, yeah. maybe, I don't know. I don't no, know, if it, so. it takes, it does take away though, when you're in the moment. And I think the two things that took away were the cheesy CGI. It did take it away from me in certain moments. And the fact that Ezra, Ezra was the flash. Yeah. Though that's, so. that's, that's the other thing too, is like, I wanted to love, cause I'm the flash is my favorite superhero. Like uh-huh, he's yeah, down. yeah, and he's so your Wolverine. I can't. It feels like I can't fully be excited and be like, I finally got to see my favorite hero in his solo movie because mm-hmm. it's like it's Ezra, and that's the other thing. It's like I would have easily bought you know the the popcorn tin, the cup, but I was like, I don't want anything with Ezra's with face with his on face it. on it. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I don't want Ezra's face on stuff. Like I don't want to go for a cup and there's Ezra. Like it's that's the other thing that really sucks. It's like I that's another thing that held me back. We did get free tickets. So at least we didn't. Get to... So Josh is when we saw Guardians of the Galaxy, we went to one of the recliner places, and apparently they are powered by batteries. And his battery was dead in the chair, and we got there early enough. He went and got somebody, and they're like, "Well, we don't have time to replace it right now, but we can give you three free tickets." And he's like, "Okay." So then we got Sweet. we used those two tickets. We had to call though to book it in advance, otherwise it would have been sold out. Right. And then when we got there, he's like, "I really hope my chair is broken again, so we get more free <laughs> tickets." Well, I have the Regal Unlimited, which is worth it if you go to two movies in a month. It pays for itself. It's eighteen dollars so i i do that and then uh i have all those gift card money so yeah so we don't go free. that well i guess this month we will if we see indiana jones in oh, june god i can't wait yeah indiana jones is the next movie that we're going to i get a week off because i'm going to la next week and there's no movies coming out thank god and then yeah indiana jones <laughs> which we will Actually, be doing an episode on before it comes out uh one big thing real quick is kripke invited like a bunch of people out to the writer strike but he's doing some event but it's june 22nd the day before i get to la i'm like damn it i could have met kripke <laughs> that would be cool that would you know, be so maybe cool. i can still run into him i don't know it's la right you're yep. there's celebrities out there and all that good and now stuff. you can be like hey i like supernatural too <gasps> yeah, that's true Woo-hoo. imagine if i meet kripke <laughs> Uh, mm. it'd be fun but yeah overall good movie go see it make your own opinions or wait till it comes out it's up to or you wait till it if comes you've, out. well you've probably i would think seen it if you've gotten this it's far gonna be on, 
max in probably like Ugh. five days, I imagine. <laughs> so max. you probably That's won't have stupid. to wait too long. Yeah. Anyways, that was our review on The Flash. If you want more, as always, subscribe, all that good stuff. Hops Geek News. We are going to be back next week with some Indiana Jones. Dun, get dun, you dun, hyped dun, up dun, for dun. the release of Dial of Destiny. Right? That's what it's called, Indiana Jones? Yes, Dial, Dial of Destiny. Destiny. Gosh, all these film titles, man, they always trip me up. Yeah, we'll see you soon. Cheers!